What's up guys? This is Build Dad Build, and I'm Nick, formerly Crash Override. So you guys are probably wondering why I'm starting the video with the build already done. And that's because the build isn't done. <laughs> this is a shelf that I got from Ikea. And today we are going to hack it. And for all you purists out there that are gonna say, why would you buy that when you can make it? I say, my kids are gonna destroy it, so I don't wanna. In all seriousness, I think I picked this up for 50, 60 bucks. I'm gonna add about, I think another $50 in lumber to it. All in all, it's gonna cost me under 150 bucks. If I would build it, it would be at least that. And I'm gonna make the video about this unit, uh, the, the Calyx unit, because this is one of the most popular items that Ikea sells. So, you may already have one laying around. Which means with minimal out of pocket, you can make this into whatever you want. So just use this as a jumping off point to create something cool out of something really ordinary. I kill me, kill me, damn, damn Amazon driver driving by 15 times, not delivering any packages. Okay, the first two things we're gonna do is we're gonna put a back on this thing and we're gonna give it a base. Uh, mainly, I just wanna make the bottom of it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, so I'm gonna use two by lumber to raise it up and bring it in a little bit just so it has kind of that, that cool detail around the bottom. And now I'm wondering if I still wanna do that because I'm gonna put two by... <laughs> For the back, I just picked up these quarter inch or five point two millimeter, two foot by four foot panels from the big box store. Uh, the reason I got this stuff instead of a full sheet is buying three small ones was still cheaper than buying a full sheet and cutting it down. So basically, I'm just gonna cut this to a little bit less than the, than the height of this, and then we're gonna tack them on. Okay, real quick, while the lawn guys aren't making all the lawn noise next door. Uh, I'm gonna cut all three of these panels at the same time because they're all the same length and it's, I just clamped them all together so it's just like cutting like a three quarters inch piece of material. They need to be 29 and a half inches. It is an inch and a half from the edge of my guide to the blade on my circular saw. So 29 and a half inches plus one and a half inches is gonna be 31 inches. That's right, right? So I basically just put a straight edge at 31 inches, so when I go, this will cut at 29 and a half. Make sense? All right, change of plans. I've been thinking about this. Um, we're gonna chunk out this. We're gonna chunk out this whole facade. So this is all gonna be chicker, chicker, thicker, and chunkier. And in order to fit the rail, we're actually gonna have this stick out on the top. So I think I'm gonna mirror that on the bottom and have it come out an inch and a half on each side. If right here, right here, focus. If we do that. I think having it up on like a pedestal base is gonna look funny because you're gonna have this like kind of chunkier bottom around it and then it's gonna like taper in. So we're scrapping the pedestal bottom, trust me. So next I'm gonna run just a little channel of one by two around the back uh, on three sides and that's where we're gonna put the LEDs. <laughs> That's right, we're getting all sci-fi and shit. I don't have enough one by two. <laughs> Found some scraps. <laughs> So right now, I'm tightening these things, the little Ikea tool. Um, I just wanna make them as flush as possible because we're actually gonna cover them up with two by fours. All right, now I'm gonna cut the two bys for the facade. I'm just gonna rough cut them at this point uh, because I'm gonna need to feed them all through the table saw to resaw them anyway. So I don't wanna do exact dimensions yet because I'm pretty much gonna like Frankenstein this together. Groovy? Groovy. <laughs> You see this knot? 
See this big chunk that somebody took out of this board? You know what we call that? Rustic. Okay, that's as good a stopping point as any for today. Uh, it's about four o'clock, I gotta go pick the kids up in a minute. And the next thing I need to do is get the table saw out and resaw all that lumber. By the time I get that saw out and everything, it'll be time to go anyway. So I'm just gonna sweep up a little bit and then we'll get back to it tomorrow. Grivy, still grivy, baby. Okay, welcome back. It is the next day and we just gonna resaw some lumbers. We're gonna resaw some lumbers, kids. I hate doing that. All right, with all that being resawn, now we have an order of operations dilemma. Dalai Lama, something Obama. <laughs> Originally, I was thinking that I was gonna have to construct all of these pieces so I could burn them, but I don't think that's the case because they're just, I don't have to, they don't have to attach to one another. They just need to attach to the unit, right? I was originally gonna pocket hold these together, but I don't think I need to. So the question becomes, if, if, if that's how I'm gonna do it, then I guess I would just cut this piece, burn it, and then attach it? Does that seem right to you? It's it's gonna be like a weird setup because like it's burn each individual board. I've never had to do this before where I'm burning part of it and the other piece, the other part can't be near fire. I'm pretty sure I, this thing will go up like a bunch of kindling if I if I, if I burn it on there. Plus, I think I would scorch the finish and I don't want to do that. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do. Just cut each piece to fit and then scrape or burn it and scrape it and. I guess move on from here. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll figure something out. But I think I think we'll go eat lunch first. Later. Okay, I thought it over, and if I do each individual piece, I think I'm going to waste time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first three pieces. I'm going to cut this piece right here to fit. Then I'm going to measure off of this one to the next one. Cut that one to fit, and then measure off that one to the next one. And then I'm gonna burn all three of those pieces, scrape all three of those pieces, and go from there. And then if anything needs to be tweaked or adjusted, I will do it then. If not, I will continue to do the top, take a look at it, and decide if we do wanna put these pieces in here or not, because I still haven't decided on that. Uh, the one thing I did do is, one thing I did do is I made a little plug jig. So basically I just, because I want all the plugs to be at the same height. So I'm just literally gonna put this up against the two by four and drill it out so I can sink my screw in there. started out drilling those holes with a Forster bit because man, I just can't get it through my head that I cannot drill well with a Forster bit. So I've switched over to a paddle bit, uh, but I'm still using the same jig and this is how. I just take the jig and line it up where I was gonna line it up before. And I just stick this through and let the point of the bit sink into the wood. And then I know where I'm gonna drill. I just got a little tape on there to make sure I don't drill too deep. All right, so you get the idea, right? We're gonna do this exact same thing. Can you see that? You can see that. Uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the top. And that's what the top's gonna look like. <laughs> oh, one thing. Um, I did, it did feel a little wobbly, so I did uh, drill in another um, hole here and attach it to the side runners and one in the back as well. So there's one that drills into the back of the piece. These pieces were just a little too flimsy. They're solid now. So there's a little twist on this board to begin with, but now, 
<laughs> um, it's pretty bad. So I'm hoping the old Calyx can hold this piece in. I'm gonna clamp it in and try to screw it in, but hopefully, uh, hopefully whatever this thing's made out of doesn't blow out. <laughs> so I'm a little afraid to take the clamps off. Uh, Cause that's an ingrain. So I was gonna take a poll on whether to put these in here or not, but once you put that in there, it's gotta be in there, right? Like that doesn't, it, it doesn't look good without it now to me. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Shishugibon. You can call it Burntwood Finish. You can call it Yakitsuki if you want. I call it therapy. <laughs> Okay, so we get the rail up. I've got the door, I've got the rollers here. There's some really confusing instructions included. <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna kind of figure out what distance I want here. I'm gonna cut like a test board and see if it fits. Because this thing's telling me, actually it's, it's telling you if, it's, if you're doing cabinets or something or another, like you have to have so much below and so much above, but I, I don't fall under those constraints. So the information, information is false uh, it just doesn't apply to me so I like I said I'm gonna take some measurements maybe cut it even a little long just throw some screws in there and see if it's gonna run back and forth and then we'll go from there so I don't think I want it that long <laughs> Okay, what I discovered when I did the test piece with just the two by four on there is that there's a very small margin of error or margin of, wait for it, insertion. With the way I have the rail on there, there's like a 16th of an inch that'll allow me to get the wheels on and also cover up the, uh, make sure that there's no gap under here. So this is the moment of truth. That's the reason I only put uh, one screw in each side because if I need to adjust it, uh, I didn't want to put them all in there because it'd just be a big pain in the ass. So, wish me luck. Oh, damn. And now it's going to roll that way because the garage is on a slant. But, it fits. And, you can't see behind it. Yay! First time, man. That never happens. Alright, let's screw the rest of this thing on. Just got the old stop and show us what you're doing from Mrs. Kristen Sawdust. And uh, I just installed this little barn door slider daily. And it works. 
Hootie hoo! Happy Friday. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking around to the end of the build. I like it. I, uh, I, I really like it. I had uh, mixed feelings about it while I was working on it, which is the case with most of my projects. But I really like the way it turned out. I really hope that you guys can get the detail um, in the burn and the dye. It's just, it's it's so rich. I taking some pictures earlier and I just don't think it's going to translate as well, but it, it it's but the colors are amazing. Um, I couldn't be happier with the barn door slider. Uh, LEDs went on without a without a hitch. Well, one hitch. I forgot to film it, <laughs> but it's just an adhesive strip. I'm sure you guys know how to put LEDs on something. All right, so let's talk about what went wrong. <laughs> uh, the biggest setback was that it was the twist in the wood. Um, it did it did hold with uh, with wood glue, but they're. Uh, what I didn't realize is it did separate it on this end just a little bit. It's it's not bad. I mean, it just looks it looks rustic. Uh, it, I mean, it fits with the piece, um, but I didn't notice this until later, or I would have tried to glue it too. What I did do that just makes me mad because I was hurrying and I, I wasn't thinking. For part of the build, I had this flipped over, and when I had it flipped over, I had a tarp underneath it so it wouldn't get scratched up. Well. I moved that tarp out to do something I can't remember and I forgot to put it back. So there's some scratches in the top of this that I wish weren't there, uh, but that was completely user error. In retrospect, I would have made this, I would have used a two by six for the tops around. So it would stick up and create kind of a lip around here because you've got this, you've got the Ikea cabinet where this isn't completely flush. So I go flush up to this, but then there's this little ridge right here. I think it would have been a lot easier if this would have been up, you just wouldn't have seen it. Check it out. <laughs> All that being said, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I, this whole channel is about the community that I'm trying to build. I, it, it's, about, it's about us learning from each other and inspiring each other. We share projects on my Discord server. I'll, Put the link to that down below and yeah i learned from you guys just as much as you learned from me so uh you guys i mean i couldn't do this without you thank you so much extra special thanks to my patreon supporters if you haven't checked out my patreon page yet head on over check it out you can join for the cost of uh grande extra frappa lappuccino or whatever the kids are drinking these days is it cold brew is it hot brew like i remember when cold coffee was nasty and now it's a thing what's going on with that Check out the Patreon page, stop by the Discord server, say hi. And until next time, guys, thanks for playing. Now I gotta get to work. <laughs> Not without that. All right, real quick, while the long guys are not being incredibly loud, too late. So next, I'm just gonna run a little me. Focus on me. Fuck that thing. I am first form. <laughs> Actually, I'm Iron Man. Don't tell anybody that. Okay, more like Iron Man's dumb, fat apprentice. <laughs>